So there are some really good plant-based hot dogs on the market, but I'll tell you, none of them really hit the mark on tasting and having the same texture as a great all beef hot dog. Now there's a lot of really good vegan meats that have came out, Impossible, one of them, you could buy it in the store now, and they have nailed the taste and texture of beef. So I'm wondering, Impossible says on their website that you can make anything with Impossible meat that you would make normally with ground beef. Can we make a vegan all beef hot dog that has the same taste, texture, snap, bite, everything as a regular hot dog? using impossible meat. I don't know how to make hot dogs. I've never made hot dogs before, so I just Google searched and I'm using the very top result for hot dog recipe. This is gonna be a first. Okay, so there's gonna be a few things that you're gonna need to make this. You're gonna need the impossible meat and then all of the ingredients will run through those as we go. But we will need some 26 millimeter. Now this is plastic hot dog casing. We're gonna make the hot dogs in this. You cook them in this so that way they get their shape and stuff and then you peel these off. This is very similar to like grocery store hot dogs. They don't really, they don't usually have a casing on them. They're just cooked in a casing. And I know a lot of plant-based people don't have these, but you're gonna need a sausage stuffer. This one's from Amazon, connects right into my KitchenAid into my stand mixer, but you can get inexpensive, just press style ones if you wanna to try to make this. So I have two packages of the Impossible Beef. This does get a little expensive, but this is really just a, a test in the theory. Can we make an incredible all beef hot dog with Impossible? I'm gonna throw them in the freezer until they're ready to go, uh, cause we wanna make sure that that fat doesn't melt, those little fat bits. So first things first, we need about a quarter cup of finely chopped minced sweet, I'm gonna use sweet onion. I'm gonna throw that into a bowl, let's mince up some garlic, and I'm just doing one small garlic clove. So at this point, let's move over to the seasonings. Like I said, I wanna get everything done before we put the meat in because we're gonna try to keep that meat very cold throughout this entire process. It's gonna, I think it's gonna make the grinding and the texture kind of work just a little bit better. So first up, one teaspoon ground coriander, a quarter teaspoon, and you guys are gonna just make fun of me like you wouldn't believe of Marjoram, Marjoram. Baby, how do you pronounce this? So we're gonna do a quarter teaspoon of that ingredient. And it's funny, as when I was looking up recipes for this stuff, I went through and I was tasting all of the ingredients to see what had like those specific tastes that hot dog has. And it's funny, the coriander and marjoram together kind of have to, has that hot dog taste. We're doing a quarter teaspoon of mace, ground mace half teaspoon mustard, dry mustard, one teaspoon paprika. Now the recipe calls for sweet paprika, but I want these to have kind of a smoky taste because a lot of hot dogs are smoked. Um, so we're gonna do a smoked paprika. I thought that would be a nice, a nice flavor additive. And we know how we use smoked paprika here on the channel. One teaspoon white pepper, one and a half teaspoons sugar. Now this recipe specifically calls for white sugar, but I have a feeling that brown sugar might kind of up the taste. Uh, Let's see how this one goes first. Then we're gonna do about one teaspoon of salt. Now the recipe calls for one large egg white. That's strictly, it's strictly a binding ingredient. We're gonna substitute that for two tablespoons of just egg. That should be the equivalent of our one large egg white. Now I think realistically you could probably use any egg replacer. Just about two tablespoons of egg replacer would work. And then the recipe calls for a quarter cup of milk. We're gonna do almost a quarter cup of milk. I'm just, like I said, I'm testing this to see if this works. But, but I know meat has a higher binding capability than just like, than any of these plant-based meats, like impossible meat and stuff. They don't bind together as much as just raw meat does. Now, at this point, I'm just gonna give this just a quick mix to kind of get these ingredients a little bit better, evenly distributed. It's gonna kind of help it mix into the impossible meat a little bit better, I'm thinking. Just gonna taste this seasoning and see how dog like it. Oh, okay. I can I could totally see that. So let's drop in our two packages of Impossible. Now this isn't a sponsored video. I just wanted to see if we could do it. It's wild how much the Impossible Burger looks like meat. Impossible people, if you're watching, I mean, have you guys thought of this? Have you guys tried this? Why aren't the Why aren't the people at Impossible doing this? Let's give this a mix. Get everything nice and combined. Now I will say at this point. It does kind of have a hot dog smell. I think we're, we're on the right track. Okay, I think that's pretty good. We need to run this through the grinder to combine everything, those onions, the garlic, that fat, really kind of, really get this ground down so that way it's no longer a crumbly burger. It's more of like that hot dog, solid, finer mince consistency. 
this should run through the grinder fairly easy. Now, if you just have like a sausage stuffer, you know, where it's like a press style and you don't have this grinder with like the fine grinding wheel attachment, you would just want to throw all of this in like either like a blender or food processor and pulse it pretty fine. We're going to get this going on about a medium speed and let's start spooning in some of the mixture here. The smell of this is just insane. I, I, I truly think this is going to nail that flavor. At least I hope it does. We're gonna swap out this bowl for this bowl. Let's run through again. So I'm gonna throw this in the freezer to get really chill. We're gonna clean this all up and get ready to stuff our plastic hot dog casings. It's the next step in this test. Okay, so this stuff is nice and cooled. It just came out of the freezer. It's ready to be turned into a hot dog. So I have my plastic hot dog casing here. We're gonna throw quite a bit of this onto the end of my, um, my stuffer here. Now I'm using the large stuffer, probably should be using the smaller one. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of this off. I'm gonna try to just kind of tie this end off. Let's fire this guy up and start getting some meat in here, stuffing some hot dogs, all beef hot dogs. Now all I'm doing is just kind of keeping some tension on the end here so that way that beef fills up in this plastic casing. Now in this initial run, I only wanna make like half of these because I just wanna see, you know, if there's anything that needs to be adjusted or changed before I make any other dogs. <laughs> this is coming out amazing. Okay, and that looks like that's gonna be it. Otherwise, we're not gonna be able to tie this off. So let's take this off. I mean, that's it. That's a hot dog. That is a hot dog. Look at this. <laughs> So right off the bat, I'm just gonna twist this little end here. I kind of overfilled this one. Yeah, so I'm just getting rid of some of that excess there. Let's boil these guys up for about 20 minutes and see if we have some hot dogs. Okay, these guys have been boiling for like 20 minutes. Let's remove these casings and see if we have some hot dogs. So it does look like we have some like air bubbles in here. Now maybe I could have packed these more cause they just didn't get as smooth as I would like. But let's see, does this taste like an all beef hot dog? It's definitely good. And it's just definitely not dense enough. It's not bad though, it's really not bad. Okay, so we want this to be a bit smoother and also have a little bit more of like a bite, like a pop to it. And I think I know how we're gonna accomplish that. It's gonna be fairly easy and we've used these ingredients in the past and a lot of plant-based products have these ingredients already in them. We're gonna use just a bit of konchak gum and a bit of kappa carrageenan. If you don't wanna use kappa carrageenan, you could probably, there's a few different things you can use, like a starch or something to thicken it up. Now I'm gonna add another tablespoon of the just egg. There's still probably about a pound of meat left in here. So for like the one pound of impossible, I'm gonna use one tablespoon of the kappa carrageenan and we're gonna do a teaspoon of konjac gum. Now konjac gum should give it a little bit more of a bite. The kappa carrageenan is gonna help it get more firm. We're also gonna add just another touch of that cashew milk. Okay, we have our new mixture. Still smells like hot dog here. It really smells like hot dog. Okay, let's see if we can stuff some hot dogs. Some legit 100% plant-based beef hot dogs. I mean, that's just not something that you hear. I decided to use the Kappa Carrageenan because it just seemed like it would make sense. But I also just recently read about a hot dog, um, I believe it was in the UK. I can't remember exactly where it was, but it was a vegan hot dog that was made out of carrots, but it was like carrot fiber and Kappa Carrageenan was one of the main ingredients. And I was like, wow, that's a really wild ingredient for a hot dog, but kind of makes sense. Okay, this thing is, we got a self, a huge hot dog. Let's twist these off. I'm just gonna pinch it at about like the six inch mark, the hot dog length mark, and then give it a twist. And we're gonna twist the other way. So we got six hot dogs out of this mixture. We had two out of the first all together. This, this recipe that about two pounds of meat makes about eight hot dogs, which is pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap these up, throw these in boiling water. We're gonna boil them for about 20, 30 minutes or so. And let's see if we got some hot dogs. Ah, <laughs> It is smelling very hot doggy in here. Okay, so let's unwrap these guys and see if we have some hot dogs, some vegan hot dogs. I have a feeling, I have a good feeling. I mean, so some of them came out phenomenal. Like some of them came out literally phenomenal. I mean, 
That looks like the inside of a hot dog. I think this might be it. It's crazy, they smell like beef hot dogs. Wow, wow. You're gonna go nuts over this. I mean, <laughs> look at that son of a bitch. I mean, look at that thing. That is a vegan hot dog. That's a vegan dog. Are you ready? Yes. Mmm, it tastes just like a hot dog. <laughs> I mean, it's just like a friggin' hot dog. It's very, very impressive. Thanks, baby. Thank you. And I'm actually, I'm so impressed. I'm surprised that Impossible hasn't done this yet. This is shockingly good. This is the best vegan hot dog that I have ever had. I have never had a vegan hot dog this legit. Now, at this point, you could put these in the refrigerator, throw them on the grill, cook them just like you would any other hot dog. I wouldn't boil them again at this point. They already have the skin off, so don't boil them. But you can throw them in a pan, throw them on the grill, anything to reheat them like that, that's gonna work really well. But that's it, the Impossible Hot Dog, it can happen. It's totally possible.